Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone. Welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna to do a follow-up video on that 2001 Toyota Corolla, no, I'm sorry, 2011 Toyota Corolla with a 1.8 liter engine. This one had a blown head gasket because the cooling fan had failed and it just came apart. Uh, and so it came to me to do the head gasket. My, I already, uh, I, I already have a video about how to take the head off, show you how to disassemble it. And in this video, we're gonna show you how to put it back together. Uh, I will not tell you torque specs uh, because I don't want you torquing something based on what I'm working on. Because if your engine is slightly different and the torque spec is slightly different, I don't want your engine to fail because you use my torque specs. But I will tell you how to do it. I will tell you the process. I'm gonna walk you through the process and some tips and tricks on how to get this done. Um, I also strongly recommend that you use Toyota silicone. Um, I'll show you when I get to that point. Uh, I've resealed timing covers and uh, head jobs. Actually, the, the Toyota that I'm driving, before I owned it, I did a head gasket on it and uh, it came back leaking. Uh, the timing cover was leaking because of the silicone that we use. Uh, so I actually use factory silicone now uh, to make sure that uh, I don't have any leaks. I don't want to take it back apart. So let's get into it. Let me show you how to do this head gasket and, uh, and how to put it back together. Okay, heads on and it's torqued. So what I do is I always do my initial torque, which I think on this one was 36 foot pounds, and then it was 90 degrees and then 45. So once I've done the, the, the foot pound torquing, before I do the degrees, I put a paint mark and uh, I put it on all the head bolts. And that way I know that when I'm all done with the first step of the 90 degrees, that all of them show 90 degrees because as much as you wanna make sure you don't mess up, Sometimes we, we count wrong. And so that way when you're all done, you're 100% positive that every head bolt got torqued, it got torqued properly, and your torque wrench didn't fail, and they're all where they need to be. All right, one thing I forgot to tell you is when you're taking it apart, you got these little caps and they sit on top of the valves. So now that we've, we're putting it back together, I put a little dab of oil on top of each one of the valves and I put the caps on there uh, and then um, get them all on. They don't matter where they go, they're just little caps. Then from there, you're going to put your lifters in. So I always go by and squirt a little bit of oil on all the lifters, rub it all around so that way it's lubricated. You don't want any metal on metal without oil or assembly lube. So get all those in and make sure they're lubed. All right, next step is you're gonna put a drop of oil on top of that, that valve cap and on top of the lifter and you're gonna set all your rockers in. Make sure your rockers go back in the same position. I always put everything back where it was, and then I put a dab of oil on top of each one of the rollers. The next step is we're gonna get this cam carrier. Now all this has to be done together because it's gonna be silicone. You're gonna come over here, and this is just a diagram to show you where the silicone goes. You're gonna run a bead of silicone around your cam carrier, just like that. I use Toyota silicone, I showed you before, uh, I've, I've always used it. Uh, well, actually one time I used regular silicone at least. So factory silicone it is. Then you're going to set it on. You're going to put your two bolts in your cam carrier to support it. And then you're going to put your cams in. You're going to put all these cam bridges in and you're going to get ready to torque. They all get torqued together. All right. So when you put your cams in, make sure that you have the position correct. The left one goes about 12 o'clock and the right one goes about 1:30 ish. Now you're gonna do all of your black bolts, the 10 millimeters are gonna be first. You're gonna to torque all of those first, and then you're gonna bolt, then you're gonna to torque all of the 12 millimeter bolts, which are gold. Uh, and that's also going to be the one around the perimeter. When I said I put those bolts in originally, I only put them in loosely to, to make sure that the carrier doesn't move. Uh, it sits in dowels, so it really can't like move on you. So once you've done all that and torqued all of that, next thing we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to put our O-rings in the block. You got the one down below right there, and then you have the two up top. Get those three O-rings in. Give your timing cover and head one more uh, wipe down. Make sure it's all clean while there's nothing in the way. And uh, that little bit of silicone that's sticking out, you're going to just take a razor knife and cut that off. And don't pull it off. And then we're going to put the front timing chain guide on, the fixed one. It's got two bolts. And then the rear, and then we're going to put the, 
the timing chain on, and then the rear timing chain, the one that has uh, one fixed point, is going to go on. All right, so I put this together a little different than I took it apart. I forgot. The last one I did the same thing. So this one has really vibrant uh, marks, uh, and so there's a single orange uh, link, and there's a double orange link. So the single orange link goes to the rear cam, and the double orange link gets split to the front cam. Now, down here... Okay, so down here you're gonna have a yellow link at the crank, it's gonna line up right to that point right there, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put this front timing chain guide on, two bolts. Then you're gonna set your chain in there. You're gonna get it all timed. And then you're gonna put your rear guide in, which is a slipper, and it just goes over one dowel. And then it will just sit right inside the timing cover, right inside the block, it'll just sit there. Lube up those O-rings, no silicone, don't silicone those O-rings. Then you're gonna put this upper chain guide on. Now verify all three of your marks are correct and do not move the engine. You do not turn the engine over at this point. Make sure your slipper is inside the block. Next thing you're gonna do is get your timing cover siliconed, but do not forget to put your thermostat housing on the timing cover before you silicone it. Put that on, silicone, put your cover on. Now the proper way to do this is you want your bracket on the block already and you have your timing, your thermostat housing on the timing cover. So when you put your timing cover on, it goes under, under and over the bracket. There's one bolt that's, that's, it's really difficult to get them all off. So you want to make sure your bracket is on before your timing cover goes on. And your thermostat housing is bolted to your timing cover and then you put it on that way. Otherwise, you give yourself a big headache. Don't do what I did. All right, so somebody messed me up. Normally, this tensioner right here, it comes reset. This is a new one. Out of the bag, it's supposed to be reset. And the lever is supposed to be locked on. So all you do is put it into the engine and then flip the lever. But they're a perfect example of what it's going to look like. It's going to be in the engine like this. And the long, the long part's going to be inside the body. You're going to look down through there with a screwdriver. It's a little tricky. Long flathead screwdriver, and you're going to flip that lever back like that. And then this part is going to ratchet out. It's going to go click, 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 click until it stops. And from there, your engine is timed and your tensioner is in. You do not touch anything. Do not. You don't need to roll the engine over provided you make sure that all of your timing chain marks are correct. Now to reset this, you have to flip this little park, this little ratcheting pawl down and you have to press that in. You're gonna need to use a vise because you can't get the last bit in without a vise. So you pull this down, depress it in, flip the lever, it's set. Okay, here we are, it's Monday, getting back to this. Okay, so the best way to do this uh, thermostat housing uh, bracket assembly is this. Before you put your timing cover on, put your uh, thermostat housing on your timing cover the same way we took it off. But you wanna take this bracket and make sure this bracket is on before you put your timing cover on. Because getting this housing on or getting this bracket off is almost impossible uh, because of the way the bolts go in. One of the bolts for this bracket is behind the thermostat housing. So just leave this bracket on and then put your timing cover on and your and your thermostat housing will come up under and behind this bracket here. All right, so before we left, I uh, went ahead and put the, the timing chain tensioner in uh, and I flipped the lever. So now the, the timing chain is tensioned and uh, the next step is going to be, we got to put the oil pressure switch back in the timing cover. I took it out because I wanted to put it in the parts washer and I don't put electronics in a parts washer. Uh, the next thing is I'm gonna put uh, the gaskets in right here for the variable valve timing and also right here for the oil supply. This O-ring and these two seals will not be in your headset. Along with your oil filter housing, those two O-rings. So those two O-rings and these three seals you have to get separate from the headset. So we're gonna get those put in, get this valve cover on, get the oil pressure switch back in 
and uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put this engine mount in and then we're gonna start putting the intake manifold back together uh, before you put your intake in uh, do not forget to to move your dipstick over here and put it on you got one bolt right here also make sure you get your heater hoses back on uh, before oh, I would probably do it before you put your your oil dipstick in so connect your heater hoses and then roll your dipstick around connect it and then we're going to get the intake manifold ready to put in all right let's go one last thing for your timing cover and for your uh your little dabs of your so when you do your valve cover you're going to take a razor blade and cut the excess uh silicone off of here and here uh, but what you want to use is you want to use toyota self-packing 103 uh, for all your silicone on this engine uh, this engine, Toyotas do not like aftermarket, uh, just cheap silicone. So make sure that you get the good stuff so you don't have to take it back apart. All right. All right. So once you've got your heater hoses on, you're going to connect your heater hose here and you're going to connect the heater hose pipe. You got a bolt there under the radiator hose connection and then over here at the back. Get those two bolts in to secure that heater pipe. And, uh, and then we're gonna put the fuel rail in. You got one bolt there, and then it's gonna wrap around and it's gonna slip right on. Don't forget new seals right here on your injectors. Clean up your injectors. I like to lube the seals with Silglide, okay? And then also don't forget the two plastic spacers that go between your fuel rail and your cylinder head. Those are really important. Don't forget those, don't lose those, there they are. Before we put the intake manifold on, you're going to get all your connectors connected. You're going to get your oil control valves, your coils, your cam sensors, your EVAP purge. You're going to connect all that, connect all your pipes, connect your oxygen sensor, clip it in. You're going to make sure you get this pipe assembly for the brake booster hose and for the EVAP purge hose. Next, we're going to get the engine mount in. Got your radiator hose on. Heater hoses all connected. Line up all your paint marks. We're going to connect the PCM. We're going to loosely leave that. That goes to the mass airflow sensor and the air and the and the battery box, air box and the battery box are going to go in there. So some stuff bolts to that. So we're going to leave all of that. Make sure you get all those little channels cleaned out on top of your transmission so you don't have puddles of coolant because then it you're not sure if you have a leak. There's that dipstick I told you not to forget. I almost forgot it. The knock sensor. We had talked about not disconnecting it at one point, and then we disconnected it. Don't forget to connect it. Be very careful with the harness. You want to make sure that your oil control valves are connected, your oil pressure switch is connected, and your crank sensor on the back of the timing cover, and your cam sensors. That one right there is very easy to miss. That one at the back, don't forget. Double check all your connectors. All right, so a little tech tip here is anytime you're taking off a balancer and replacing a crank seal or anything like that, what you want to look for is a really, is a groove. Right there you can see a fat groove in it. So what happens is the seal rides in one spot on the balancer and it starts to cut a groove in the balancer. And when you put a new seal and put the balancer back on, that seal is now it's uh, now it goes into that groove and it will leak. So whenever you have that, if you can catch an edge, taking a screwdriver and rubbing it across that groove, then that means that you need to replace the balancer. So let's I'm gonna replace the balancer in this one. Not a whole lot left here. Uh, got the oil filter in, I'm waiting on the balancer. Uh, just make sure you lubricate the outside of the balancer where it goes into the seal. Uh, once I get done with that, I gotta put the belt on. Uh, I got to uh, uh, just connect the exhaust right here, all right, put the brackets back on, and then put the air box and the battery back in, and uh, I will, all right, let's get that on and see where we're at. All right, so here we go, it's running. Uh, one little tip that I have that, that I do is that I don't put things back together that I don't have to until I know everything is good. So like right now, I have this whole cowl off. I left it off, the undercovers are off, the wheel is off. Uh, I pretty much leave off everything I can. I don't charge up the AC uh, because sometimes, no matter how good you are, sometimes you make a mistake. 
and or sometimes a part fails. And if that's the case, you got to take it all back apart. And I'd rather not take apart stuff twice if I could help it. So that's what I do. So here we are running. So this was the video on how to install this cylinder head. Not too bad. All right. Let's get the thing up to operating temperature and get it back together.